With the continuing development of web technologies that are making our web browsers better, there are now a lot of powerful web apps that can be run inside your browser that can perform many of the essential tasks of standalone software installed on your computer. In this video, I'll show you 10 useful websites that do a great job of replacing your PC's desktop software. All you need is your trusty web browser, a good internet connection, and because they're web-based, they'll work on just about every operating system. Let's get started. First up is Pixlr Editor, which is a great alternative to Photoshop or GIMP. It may not be as powerful as those two programs, but includes a wide array of tools, filters, adjustment options, and even has layers. When you launch the web app, your choices are to create a brand new image, open an image from your computer, open an image from a specific URL, or to open an image from your Pixlr, Facebook, or other library. After you've selected your image, all the tools you'll be working with are located on the left side. You can add new layers on the right. I would recommend that if you've never used an image editor before, that you watch tutorials when you're getting started. If you've used Photoshop or GIMP, this won't be too difficult for you to figure out. Pixlr Editor is completely free. If you're just wanting to do a quick fix to an image, then I'd recommend that you also check out Pixlr Express. TinyPNG is the site I use to compress images. This is useful if you're looking to reduce the amount of space being used up on your drives. If you're a website developer, the reduced size of your image files will make your web pages load quicker. It's almost impossible to see the difference in quality between the uncompressed and compressed images. It's really easy to use. At the top of the page, just find an image on your computer. You can actually select up to 20 images no more than 5 megabytes each, and drop them right here. When it's done, it will show you how much your image was reduced in size. With TinyPNG, you can download each compressed image individually, save to Dropbox, or download all if you compress more than one image. I'll move through these next two sites quickly. The Google Office Suite is an alternative to Microsoft Office. Although it's not as fully featured, there are separate tools here for documents, spreadsheets, presentations, and forms. There are just enough handy features here to satisfy the average user. If you prefer the layout of Microsoft Office, they do offer a free online version called Office Online. The online apps that are available include Word, Excel, PowerPoint, and many others. When you open one of the apps, there's the familiar ribbon at the top. The Office Online apps are lacking some of the advanced features that are available in their PC software, but just like the Office apps from Google, most people won't miss them. Online Convert is an easy to use file converter that will take just about any media file on your computer no larger than 100 megabytes and convert it from one format to another. Here is how it works. If I wanted to convert an audio file from MP3 to AAC, I would select the drop-down box for Audio Converter and select Convert to AAC. On the next screen, select Browse. Find your file and select Open. There are optional settings listed below for changing the audio bitrate and others. When you're ready, select Convert File. Depending on your file, it may take a minute or two. Once it's done, you can save that converted file to your computer. Instead of using a media player installed on your computer to play songs consuming your hard drive space, you could use a web player from one of the many online music streaming services. Most have free plans, usually ad supported, with the option to spend around $10 per month to get extra features and get rid of the ads. Whichever you choose is just a matter of personal preference. My favorite right now is Spotify. It has over 40 million songs, high audio quality options, and offers offline listening. Next up is Trello. This is a great project management tool for individuals or teams to help them get organized with the use of visual boards, which are broken down into lists for particular tasks. When collaborating on a project, all those involved have access to the Trello cards, comments, and attachments. One of the best features that I appreciate is that if anything important happens regarding the project, you'll get notified through their notification system. In addition to their web app, 
Trello has apps for Android, iOS, Mac, and Windows. For most users, the basic functionality of the free version of Trello will be all that they need. If you run a business that requires additional features, including integration with services like Dropbox, Evernote, Slack, and several others, monthly plans start out at $9.99 per user each month. PDF Escape is an excellent PDF editor with features not often found in many of the free alternatives to Adobe Acrobat. It lets you create or fill in PDF forms online within your browser. In addition, you can add text, sticky notes, links, draw basic shapes, along with other features. When you're creating or loading a PDF, the files must be less than 10 megabytes and less than 100 pages. For most PDFs, this usually is not an issue. The free version of PDF Escape is supported with ads. To get rid of the ads and get additional features, they have other plans starting at $2.99 per month. Mint is a trusted online site that offers personalized finance tools that most of you are probably familiar with. You can link up your bank accounts, cards, and bills to help you keep track of your budgets, investments, and will show you new ways to save more money. It will even keep track of your Bitcoins. Mint is free to use, even making payments with your bank accounts is free, but there are fees for making payments with a credit or debit card. Other than that, it's an easy service to use to keep track of your spending and budget. If you're still using Microsoft Money, which was discontinued many years ago and no longer receives feature or security updates, it just might be a good idea for you to switch to a service that is still supported. This video would not be complete without mentioning VirusTotal, which is a free service that uses more than 60 scanners to detect malware, viruses, and other kinds of malicious content. It's simple to use. Select Choose File, and select the file that you would like to scan. Once it's done, it'll let you know how many scanning engines detected malicious content. In this case, all 65 say this file is clean. Even if you have one or two, that doesn't mean that the file you selected is bad. Sometimes the security scanners will issue false positives. I also use VirusTotal multiple times per week to scan URLs. It's easy to use too. Select URL, copy and paste, or type the URL of a website, and when you're done, hit enter. One of the engines has detected phishing from this site. My instincts tell me that this is probably a false positive. On a personal note, I generally try to avoid the site as much as possible. Other than being hacked on more than one occasion and failing to notify the public in a timely manner, the site is considered to be safe to use. VirusTotal does not completely replace your antivirus or malware security software, but should be thought of as an extra tool that you can use to check out those suspicious files and URLs. Thanks for watching. Give this video a thumbs up if it was useful for you. If you know of a website that's a good alternative for desktop software, let me know about it in the comments. And if you're new to this channel, subscribe and click the bell notification icon to stay up to date with more useful websites and other tech-related stuff from Tech Gumbo.